Exodus chapter 25, part 2. Okay. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its length, and a cubit and a half its width. Okay. Now, if you'll remember from the last video, I told you the measurements of that. Okay. And you shall make two cherubim of gold. Of hammered work you shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Now, what is a cherubim? Okay. First of all, cherubim is plural for cherub. Now, I did some research on this. Modern times have made these cherubs into these tiny little baby-like creatures with wings and, and they're like little angels. Ah, 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 ah. The original cherubs were either uh, king's heads with lion bodies and wings, something like that, or like in Ezekiel they had four heads. You had your human head, you had your eagle head, you had your ox head, and you had your lion's head. And then you'd have this winged body. Okay. So realistically these were not little baby creatures. I know my hair is just a little messed up, but that's okay. But anyway, they were not little winged creatures. These creatures served a very specific purpose. They were to be guards, usually on doors. Okay, so in other words, you had, would have to go past these cherubs in order to enter cer a certain room. In this particular case, they were put on the top of the mercy seat because what they were doing is they were guarding you against the law that was underneath them. That was the way this thing was working. Okay? Now God said, make one cherub at one end and the other cherub at the other end. You shall make the cherubim at the two ends of it of one piece with the mercy seat. In other words, when these two chairs were put together, it was to be as though it were one piece, not separated in any way, shape, or form. And the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another, and the faces of the cherubim shall be towards the mercy seat. You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony I will give you. In other words, what God was doing, basically, was saying, Alright, I've got this law, but I'm going to put a mercy seat on top of the law. And the reason why God was doing this, okay, is that he wanted to say that mercy supersedes the law. The law is there, but his mercy supersedes it. That's pretty comforting. And there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, which are on the ark of the testimony, about everything I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel. So basically God was saying, I'm going to sit upon the mercy seat. Under the mercy seat is the law, but I'm going to sit over that. Showing that mercy is more important than the law. The law is important, but there's mercy above it. That's a good thing. This is the kind of God you want in your life. One who thinks about mercy over the law. It's not that he doesn't think about the law. He has put mercy above the law.
You shall also make a table of Acadia wood. Two cubit, cubits shall be its length, a cubit its width, and a cubit and a half its height. All of these measurements talked about in the last video. And you shall overlay it with pure gold and make a molding of gold all around. In other words, this table was made with, with Acadia wood, but as soon as it was made, it was literally covered in gold. Gold is a purifier. In the Bible, God, gold is a purifier. And that's what God wanted on his Ark of the Covenant and also on this table. You shall make for it a frame of a hand breadth. What is a hand breadth? Well, a hand breadth is usually the length of your hand, which in this case would be somewhere between two and a half or four inches in length. And you shall make a gold molding for the frame all around. And you shall make for it four rings of gold and put the rings on the four corners that are at its four legs. The rings shall be close to the frame as holders of the poles to bear the table. In other words, this table is going to be moved just like the Ark of the Covenant. And you shall make with the poles of Acadia wood Oh, and you shall make the poles of Acadia wood and overlay them with gold that the table may be carried with them. Okay, so you got sturdy Acadia wood. They're covered in gold too. These things were meant to last a long time. You shall make its dishes, its pans, its pitchers, and its bowls for pouring. You shall make them pure gold. In other words, all the dishes that were required to do whatever was supposed to be done on that table had to be made out of gold. Wow. And you shall set the showbread on the table before me always. This showbread more than likely was unleavened bread. It was pretty flat and probably pretty tasteless. It was not wonder bread that they put on there. It was not your grandmother's bread they put on there. They put a very flat, crackery type bread with no leavening in, at all in it. Because God wanted things pure on his table. You shall also make a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand shall be, be of hammered work. Its shaft, its branches, it its bowls, its ornamental knobs, and flowers shall be of one piece. In other words, you are going to super glue this thing together. You are going to put a bunch of screws in it. It was to be made in one solid piece. And six branches shall come out of its sides. Three branches of the lamb stand out of one side and three branches of the lamb stand out of the other side. As far as I can tell, this is a biblical reference to the menorah that we have today. Three bowls shall be made like almond blossoms on one branch with an ornamental knob and a flower and three bowls made like almond blossoms on the other branch with an ornamental knob and a flower and so for the six branches that come out of the lampstand. On the lampstand itself four bowls shall be made like almond blossoms each with its own ornamental knob and flower. Wow! That is truly a lot of detail. And there shall be a knob under the first two branches of the same, and a knob under the second two branches of the same, and a knob under the third two branches of the same, according to the six branches that extend, that extend from the lampstand. Their knobs and their branches shall be of one piece 
all of it shall be one hammered piece of pure gold. Again, no screws, no super glue. You shall make seven lamps for it, and they shall arrange its lamps so they give light in front of it. And its wick trimmers and their trays shall be of pure gold. It shall be made of a talent of pure gold with all these utensils. And see to it that you make them according to the pattern which was shown you on the mountain. Basically, that's saying that this lampstand was going to be pure gold. It was going to be one piece. Okay. Which made it very difficult to construct. There were definitely going to be candles to this thing, and they were going to burn. So, if you can get the idea here, this was a very complex menorah. This was not some table lamp that you find at the Walmart or at the Five and Dime or at the Dollar Store if you want to call it that. And it served a very specific purpose. And we'll get into that in my next video. Until then, this is Ted the Speed Learner signing off and I tell you to stay tuned.